Mr. President, I rise today to urge this body to vote against the Charter School Bill 737. And let me begin with the fundamental reason why we should vote against this bill. It is not right for this time. It is designed to increase the number of charter schools in Virginia, thereby offering certain educational opportunities to some students at the expense of others, primarily at the expense of those students who are dependent upon the traditional public schools for an education. In our current budget, we have drastically cut funding to localities for public education. Local school boards are faced with a dilemma, how to do more with less. In all of the debates that I've heard in support of charter schools in the committees this session, and I have not been privy to these uh, vetting sessions that were held uh, with some officials, in all of these uh, debates, the proponents have said that local school boards that approve charter school applications would be supplemented with federal grant money from the U.S. Department of Education's Race to the Top competition. On last Thursday, the Department of Education announced the finalists for the Race to the Top, and Virginia is not among the 16 finalists chosen to be considered for funding for the $4.35 billion available for the whole country for phase one of the competition. You have the U.S. Department of Education press release on your desk today. Therefore, any new charter schools will siphon off scarce educational funds and unfairly divert meager resources needed by traditional public schools. Public education funds currently appropriated to school divisions will follow those students who are chosen by lottery to attend a charter school, leaving the local school board with significantly less money to educate the remaining students in the traditional public schools and to meet the standards of quality standards of learning, standards of accreditation, no child left behind, and other state and federal requirements affecting public schools. This is not the time to encourage and allow for expansion of charter schools. The bill is strangely silent about how charter schools will provide special education services to eligible students who are chosen in the lottery to attend the school. The argument has been that provisions such as this would be worked out in the contract between the charter school and the local school board. However, inasmuch as local school boards are required by federal, state, federal and state laws and regulations to ensure that children with disabilities are identified and educated, I don't believe we should rely on a contract that has to be worked out as a shield or protection from liability for failure to comply with federal or state laws in this area? Or will special education be one of the standards or requirements that will be waived for charter schools? If so, how will children with disabilities selected in the lottery receive a free and appropriate education that meets their specific needs and unique needs? With such definite silence on this important issue, it can be inferred that charter schools will not enroll children with disabilities. Student transportation is another service in which it appears was not contemplated by the patrons of the governor's bill. The majority of Virginia school children ride the school bus to and from school. In our urban and rural areas, school bus transportation is an essential service and many students in these areas cannot get to school without it. If a child's educational opportunity should be determined by her intellect, and I'm quoting now, if a child's educational opportunity should be determined by her intellect and work ethic, not by her zip code, how then will a child who must ride the bus to school and whose zip code is across the social and economic tracks even avail herself or himself of the educational opportunities awaiting her at the charter school. I maintain that traditional public schools will be left to educate the most vulnerable of the school population. Make no mistake about it, the students not chosen by the lottery to attend the charter school 
will be those who have physical, intellectual, and social and behavioral disabilities and require special education. Those who are labeled at risk and require remediation in core subject areas. Those that are identified as potential school dropouts, disruptive chronic truants, and children in need of services and or supervision. Children who are not proficient in education and English and require ELS classes. And children who do not have parents who are interested or actively involved in their children's education or who instill them in an appreciation of learning for many reasons, perhaps due to their own failure in school, disillusioned with public education system, disinterested in parenting, or inability to provide good parental guidance. Charter schools will be able to cherry pick students, thereby limiting interaction between students and diverse, with diverse academic abilities and social, racial, ethnic, and economic backgrounds. Research shows, and educators will tell you, that a diverse student body is beneficial to the development of students academically and socially, and enhances the learning environment. Charter schools are not purported to work because they enjoy, they are purported to work because they enjoy greater flexibility in providing innovative programs. If that is true, it would make more sense for us to relax regulations that stifle and prohibit innovation and creativity in tra traditional schools so that all students may benefit from novel instructional instruction techniques and unconventional programs. We have the power to transform traditional schools into client-centered institutions where school-level control I repeat, where school level control is supposed desirable, promoted, and allowed for making key decisions regarding programs, teaching methods, and innovative approaches to change what is not working and revolutionize public schools. Charter schools are also purported to work because of smaller class size and the increased opportunity for individual instruction. If we support charter schools based on this premise, that smaller class sizes increase academic achievement, every local school board now faced with layoff teach, laying off teachers and increasing class sizes should be rightfully incensed that we will, we will approve a proliferation of charter schools that will further drain their budgets and will get to play by different rules. Charter schools are part of the so-called choice movement in education has only been ex in existence since the mid-1990s, and the research regarding their success is mixed. Research shows that some charter schools generally keep pace with the academic achievements of traditional schools. In some cases, they do worse and rarely exceed the in performance measures of the whole school system. However, other studies point to the academic achievement and gains of students and that in charter schools provide increased opportunities for learning and access to quality education, innovative teaching practices, a system of accountability, parent and community involvement, and educational options for parents and students. Mr. President, I would submit that until evidence of the sustained success of charter schools is made available through longitudinal studies by objective researchers, we should not invest our already are inadequate public dollars in unproven schools. A recurring concern is that charter schools, by virtue of their autonomy, can be vulnerable to financial problems and mismanagement. They face problems of access to facilities and startup funds. I think there's an article in today's Time Dispatch that's illustrative of this problem. If charter schools become insolvent or fails to meet the educational achievement accountability measures that are required, what happens to those students whose charter schools must be closed? What we what must do, we must do what is necessary to protect and enhance the education opportunities for all students in our traditional schools. And if we could move to the level of the best place in the nation 